<sighs> I don't even know why I'm making this so dramatic. It doesn't even pain me to say it at this point. Lucasfilm is dead. Okay, actually, never mind, never mind. That was a lie. It does pain me to say that. Mostly because it didn't have to be this way. This was supposed to be an angry rant. And while that's not to say while typing the script that it won't eventually become an angry rant, honestly, I can pretty much guarantee it. This was supposed to be a rant just to get out my thoughts, my grievances, my frustrations as a fan. A true fan surrounding a ground level studio before my time that built itself up to a point where it was producing pure cinema itself. A studio that has spawned original franchises that extend way past generational at this point. A studio that would eventually sell for what was at the time one of the most powerful and unstoppable forces in all of entertainment history as we know it for over four billion dollars. Around two months ago I released this video and it still remains one of my most watched videos on my channel for whatever that's worth right now. A video that was created after the ending of The Mandalorian Season 3. You know, the only thing that Disney Star Wars really has going on right now and has pretty much been the staple and you could argue the face of the franchise ever since being introduced. Yeah, that feeling that you're getting in your stomach right now, that feeling that something isn't right, that feeling that you probably had while you were watching this scene and you saw that look in her eye? Yeah, you know it's kind of over at that point because you know as an audience member that you're more than likely to see something that is either, one, nonsensical to either the plot, the character, or the story, or two, the classic. Well, I should say the more modern classic Hollywood trope of subversion of expectation, but that's a video for another day. And while I'm not going to reiterate every single point that I made in that specific video, which I still definitely could do because literally nothing has happened since then, and while in that same breath I obviously recommend that you go watch that video after this one, Lucasfilm and the problem surrounding Disney's Lucasfilm as a whole is a much, much broader issue. As everyone knows at this point, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dipshit has been released to theaters, and well, we're looking at a bigger flop than my drunk uncle in a backyard pool. And that's not to say that everything at Lucasfilm was all sunshine and rainbows beforehand. Far from it, as I just described. And somewhere right now, while I make this video and you guys are watching, someone in a not-so-galaxy far, far away Kathleen Kennedy is laughing at our collective fan disgust, sipping a glass of red wine and probably pegging some low-level studio- <sighs> Oh, God. Sorry about that, I got a little out of control there. Actually, we live in a progressive world, and I did guarantee that this was more than likely to become an angry rant as we moved along, so never mind. Point is, Lucasfilm, or Disney's Lucasfilm, is dead, in the sunken place, banned, to the Shadow Realm. And while that's an extremely broad statement to make, luckily for you guys, I'm not as brain dead as Kathleen, and I've come up with a plan, a formula, and we're gonna stick with it, cause I don't bloat my content, Kathleen. Anyway, here's three main reasons why Disney's Lucasfilm is dead. Number one, legacy. Legacy is a big word, a word that can hold many different meanings to a variety of different people, from race to gender, sexuality, background, experience, fictional to non-fictional. Legacy is a word that overshadows all, and a word that in some way, shape, or form, every single person is striving for. Rather that be in the shape of fame and fortune, to leaving a mark on this world so substantial that your name will always carry on, or from counting pennies in your basement to becoming one of the biggest internet influencers in the modern day. And while obviously there is a spectrum of extremes there within my examples, the point of that soliloquy is that legacy characters are not grown on trees. In my lifetime alone, I would say only characters such as Iron Man, Captain America, John Wick, Neo, and Captain Jack Sparrow are characters, some of which aren't even original, will continue to live on as their respective actor characters for their mark that they left on the cinema world. So in saying that, it only highlights even more the substantial 
substantial return on investment it was for Disney to inherit the characters of <gasps> Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, Leia Organa, Indiana Jones, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi, R2-D2, and most importantly, John Williams. Not a character, a real person. And in doing so, to have absolutely no plan with those said characters is insanely criminal. Character assassination is a phrase that has been thrown around a lot nowadays, with me being a culprit myself from time to time. And while a lot of the attitude that's been thrown around in regards to these legacy characters' treatments within the stories that they're in is going to tie into my next point, simply put, to not have a scene with Leia, Han, and Luke together, to kill off Mutt just so you can have Indy and Marion get divorced so you can have sad, depressed Indy, was not the way to go about the purchase and the future of these characters. But because of that, we have number two, no plan. To say the cliche line, cinematic universes are a thing. They've been a thing for a long time. Some successful, well, actually one successful and a lot of unsuccessful attempts. And when discussing the most successful form of that formula, the MCU, it's clear what has lifted the MCU to a point where at their highest of peaks, they could do no wrong. Were its characters and its plan with said characters. Lucky for Disney, Star Wars was never, and at the time, I thought would never be lacking when it comes to the character department. So all that was needed was the head of the snake, the queen on the chessboard, the grand wizard in some wizarding game. Actually, not even that. All of that sounds so grand and glamorous. What we really needed, truly needed, was a fan of the product that was bought for $4 billion. Or even a rock. Maybe even a turtle. That seems backwards. But instead, we got this. Yeah. <laughs> Man, fuck you, Kathleen. I'll be dealing with you later, you fucking moldy rag. In reality, what Disney's Lucasfilm needed was someone who thought about the money, but knew the path to said money was through careful planning and construction of the old character journeys beginning anew, some journeys to be continued, and new journeys to rise. Creating an organic world-building universe with a vast array of different subtexts, species, planets, canon events, and pre-established knowledge and guidelines to work off of, with the right plan, Disney Star Wars could have truly incorporated within their stories all of the aspects and experiences of people all over the world, what some in the Hollywood realm might call representation. Pshh. And while I'm not going to lay out all of the missteps that Disney's Lucasfilm has taken with the direction of Star Wars, not only with just its legacy characters they inherited, but with the new original characters they created, pretty much setting up for failure and destroying the careers of two young and up-and-coming actors for the shoddy dialogue choices and lack of character depth or writing to be carried out on screen. Not to mention, to have an Indiana Jones film on the shelf for over a decade, with the many varying paths, character choices, destinations, directions, and ideas to choose from when it comes to deciding the next adventure for our legacy franchise. To go with the divorced old man who screams at his younger neighbors in his underwear? <sighs> I'm sorry. I just truly can't even believe that these ideas were actually passed through like 30 or 50 hands, and no one thought to themselves, uh, this is shit. Again, truly criminal, but we gotta move on. Number three, Kathleen. I mean, what a fart. And not even the good kind of fart, like when your girl leaves the house, so it's just pure bliss. And while I feel like I have to put out a disclaimer highlighting that a collapse of this catastrophic of a size simply cannot be done by one sole person, at the end of the day, the buck stops with her. The person that makes the ultimate executive decisions, and decisions did she make. For all of what her merits might have been in the past, since becoming the head of Disney's Lucasfilm, you would be hard pressed, and frankly limited on one hand to list the amount of positive impacts that she's had for the Star Wars brand as a whole. While on the other hand, an entire subgenre of internet culture has literally been spawned from the disastrous releases of the sequel trilogy. 
compiling on more past legacy character deconstruction throughout all of the mostly terribly received Disney Plus originals. Dividing a franchise that was once known as one of the greatest fan bases on earth from an entertainment industry perspective, and worst of it all, as bad as all of those things are, as bad as it is to not understand legacy, as bad as it is to not have a plan when it comes to making even the most basic constructed plots, the nail in the hypothetical head of the fan apathy that has grown to a now unmanageable size when it comes to Lucasfilm is the narcissism. Kathleen Kennedy is one of the most blatant narcissists that I've seen in the Hollywood sphere in quite some time. And while there are obviously worse things to be in life and in the entertainment industry, I'm sure that most would take narcissism on a day-to-day -day basis compared to what some other people go through. But as a paying customer, an audience member, a fan, Kathleen Kennedy's big ass head is really the death star for this studio. At this point, identity politics and messages are not a new theme when it comes to film. And while it might be a little bit more or a lot more in your face than in past eras of cinema, it's become a commonly known fact about the self-insert characters that showcase who Kathleen is really all about and how she truly views herself, and more importantly, how we, the audience, should view her. But what that has done is only wrecked the young career of up-and-coming actresses, divided a fan base to a point where Lucasfilm is afraid to even write films, let alone actually put some into production, and has created one of the largest cases of fan apathy for two franchises I'm sure most thought would never die, or at least in namesake. At the end of the day, the day Lucasfilm decided to hand the keys to the Bentley over to a woman with the hindsight that doesn't even seem like she's ever ridden a bike was the death of Lucasfilm. While character assassination and lack of world building and simple planning of a trilogy does not help, the head of the snake, the queen of the chessboard, the moldy rag, is what did us all in. A congratulations might be in order to George if he ends up buying the shit stain back at some point. It would truly be the fleece of a century. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Unlike Kathleen and to pay off my initial setup, I will leave a link to my Star Wars is Dead video in the comments in the description below. This is a very interesting think piece. And in reality, a video like this would be pointless without some dialogue. So with that being said, comment down below how you guys feel about Disney's Lucasfilm. Rather, it's Indiana Jones 5, the state of Star Wars. Maybe you guys just want to talk about our moldy rag. And as much as I clown, this is all coming from genuine love from a Star Wars fan and an entertainment fan. I mean, go check out some of my other videos to back me up. I'm not a hater for the sake of hating. But what I do hate is people that trample on the things that I love and shun me for liking it so much in the first place. It's garbage and tasteless. And while I don't think Kathleen is going anywhere anytime soon, because I mean, if not Indy 5, if not the sequel trilogy, if not the lowest rated and watched season of your premiere show, I don't really know what would do her in at this point. So, more content, I guess. Yay! But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.